So we want to speak a little about color and visual efficiency and specifically let's talk a little bit about the photopic scotopic ratios that the IES is beginning to embrace and we're seeing some movement there. Who wants to jump in on this subject? Jake. I'm not a fan of, uh, of the metric. Okay. I, Why? I, because I think um, it tries to normalize something as opposed to educating that in the, in the end less um, um, more quality foot candles is better, but I think it, it removes the, the onus of any education and trying to, to explain why, and it reduces it to a, a metric, and once you have a metric, you know, everybody can just use it and manipulate it to But you do advantage. agree we, our eyes do see better with white light as opposed to the yellow light of high pressure sodium, and we yeah. would need less light to do a task with the white light. You agree with to, the basic to do a, premise? To do a task, yes, absolutely. To drive? I'm not sold. As long as I'm in this industry, I, I, I don't, I'm not such an anti-high pressure sodium streetlight guy. So maybe I'm not great great for this topic on this no, panel. Okay. <laughs> Very bad. I, I was going to say, probably the one application where everyone seems to be rowing in the same direction, there seems to be good consensus, is that in outdoor lighting applications, that you don't need as much uh, metal halide uh, light to see equally well compared to high pressure sodium, that there is an effect, uh, uh, especially in per uh, peripheral vision, uh, to see better under metal halide solutions. You know, this controversy, which has been kind of fun actually, uh, of looking at how about in typical indoor lighting applications, can you see better? And, uh, you know, and I, and I think, you know, I've, there's camps that I'm completely convinced are correct that are saying that, you know, under normal light conditions, you're not going to get much benefit from going to higher color temperature. Perceived brightness goes up, that's true. But to lower foot candles below what the IES recommends uh, for interior lighting, I think, is treading on some risky ground. I agree with you. Okay. There's another aspect to this, too, and this applies to outdoor lighting. And the dark sky people are bringing this to the attention of, of the lighting industry and have for some time. And that is that if you do increase blue, if you do move toward the shorter wavelengths, uh, you also have environmental effects. And that's because of the circadian rhythms. Every plant and animal alive has a circadian rhythm. And you get into the melatonin receptors, you get into the, the various wavelengths that, that activate these. These tend to be shorter wavelengths. And so if you go from a high pressure sodium to a metal halide or to a high chromaticity LED, there's, there's an effect there. And we don't know exactly what numbers to put on it, but it's there. We know it's there from the research. So it has to be taken into account. We simply cannot say because there's more visibility, if there is, we should use that light source. There are implications of doing that. Mark, we haven't done, and I totally agree with you, we haven't done a good job as an industry of researching the effects right. of color uh, on human metabolism or, or plants or animals for that matter. But there are some things that have been researched well, certainly the melatonin relationship has. Yeah. Harvard had the 30-year the study with the nurses, and there's yeah. been uh, more studies than you can count, the Lighting Research Center with Mariana's work out there. We know about the relationship with melatonin suppression as and the light people. source gets more blue in people. You're absolutely right. And potentially that could present a problem, and the American Medical Association last year issued a paper on this, yeah. uh, that it could present a problem for people outside under these cooler light sources. However, one thing we also know about blue light is it's a stimulant. Right. It's what? A stimulant. Astronauts use blue LED visors to offset circadian rhythms in the, in the odd periods of time that they have to be awake. So with blue light as a stimulant, it's good probably for people that are driving because that's when you want somebody to be wide awake. It's not good if it's coming in your bedroom window. And the IPA is spot on about that because it, it will, at some level, uh, suppress melatonin. So light professionals have to be increasingly concerned about the stray light. And I guess this really leads to what Jay was saying, too, is you really need a professional to help you with things like this, because at that point it does get complex. If you have lighting coming in a bedroom window from a bluer light source, then the melatonin suppression has a higher potential of, of having a negative impact on the immune system of the person that's, that's exposed to it. So those levels are, we're, we're not totally clear on those levels. 
uh, and how much light it's going to take. But that's, again, because we have not enough research. Well, that's right, but I hate to see these things get embedded into the recommendations without consideration of the negative aspects. That's what I'm concerned about with this particular discussion. Yeah. Mary Beth? And I was just going to say it really underscores the need for good, you know, controlling light trespass. Using lighting controls that can drop light levels and off time, off peak hours when you really don't need that same outdoor lighting level. And what, how much light am I going to be under if it's in a lot of pedestrian walkways? Maybe there we choose to go to somewhat uh, warmer sources, lower color temperature sources to to help mitigate any potential effects on, on circadian rhythm. So I, you know, I, it, it's all about the research, right? This chart that we have really shows, and this is a very limited application, this is from the current IES handbook, it's mesopic multipliers, it does not apply to roadway, even the new RP8 that it should be out by the end of this year is going to avoid the mesopic uh, topic, read that on Edison report, by the way Randy. <laughs> um, so what we see in the chart is that as color temperatures go up, you're allowed a multiplier, this SP ratio, that will allow you to use less intensity, and the driver is money. No surprise there. If you can lose, use less energy, then you have a financial gain. So um, it's intuitive. If you walk under a white light source, be it metal halide or LED, and compare it to a high pressure sodium source outside, it looks brighter for a number of reasons. You certainly have the contrast. Uh, Sam Berman's research indicated the pupil size under the cooler color temperatures is smaller, which increases your depth of field, makes things look sharper and clearer, so your brain says, I can see this better. Now, yeah, but you're not, this, this, is, this is the assumption that you have the identical luminaire with the identical light source, focal point, cutoff, etc. So it, it's great that it's the identical luminaire with a different light source, but when you go change the light source and the luminaire, um, I think it changes. Do you mean every, it changes? It, you know, all of a sudden maybe it's the right color to feel comfortable under, but not necessarily the luminaire doing the right job to feel more. Oh comfortable. no, this isn't addressing optical control no. at all, and it's really not saying these levels are comfortable because some people aren't going to like 2000K because it's very yellow, and some people aren't going to like 7500 because it's horrible, right? That's a pejorative word, but you know, it's awful blue. Um, but for area lighting and for landscape lighting, this is the current recommended practice. Now, they've also, in, in the last year, gone to uh, interior spaces with this whole issue uh, of scotopic enhancement as well and issued TM24-12, a very controversial document. It only addresses high brightness areas uh, inside, but uh, categories P through Q in the uh, IES um, illuminance categories. But it allows you to use less intensity as the light source has a higher color temperature and therefore a, a more blue content. In the year 2020, will the majority of street lighting still be high pressure sodium? No? No? I don't think it will be. No, no. With the spectral distribution and so forth that you can do with the LED, I don't. I don't see that uh, being the case. So not in new construction, but in existing street lights all over the country, more than half of them will be changed to LED by 2020. Uh, uh, we actually, we were just having a little conversation <laughs> on this during the break, and if we're talking about utility-driven market, um, there is still a very heavy saturation of mercury vapor. For them to make the mercury vapor to LED uh, is a, probably a greater shift than we have precedent for. Many of them are probably going to go, as Terry suggested, high pressure sodium next. The economics are going to drive the utilities, of course, and, and, and maintenance. They're very sensitive to maintenance. So I, I think that's a risky statement, but uh, if it is not utility street lighting, chances are that LEDs will certainly be considered. But on the other hand, let me ask the panel this. Has anybody ever seen an LED outdoor lighting system that wasn't glaring? <laughs> They're well, rare. Yeah. Well, I haven't. <laughs> thousand points of light. Well, actually, yeah. um, I've seen a lot of HID sources that are really glaring. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I understand um, that, but I know how to fix HID. <laughs> yeah. No, I understand. And, and you're right in that Child. most of these fixtures have some high angle brightness. But the energy savings, once again, has been, been a 
yeah, I, I understand, but, but the quality lighting aspects have got to count too, and I would submit to you that the glare is also interfering with our visibility, so our story is getting muddled. If we're spending all this emphasis on saving energy with outdoor lighting and not paying attention to glare, we're not doing the right job. Mary Beth? I, I just was going to say, I would think, you know, from a, the dark sky standpoint, I mean, the fact, one, there are f some pictures that are that are much more acceptable from a glare standpoint than others, and there's, there's a full range. But the fact that you can effectively illuminate outdoor areas with less lumens, so you have less light to be reflected off of pavement, I mean, we're assuming cutoff, but the fact that you just don't need a, as many lumens hitting, hitting the pavement or hitting the surfaces and still get good lighting for safety and security uh, should should be a, definitely a check in the plus column for sure.